First of all, Jim and I score your podcast, but uh, yo, congrats are in order. Congrats are in order. Because um, the my new position, you know what I'm saying? My, new my baby's at ninety three point nine. Neo L. Shout out to all that shit. All that. Pour me up. Pour me up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how much you suppose. You got a temperature glass. Yeah, right, right. and you gotta let the little fizz. Lil Fizz, speaking of Lil Fizz, <laughs> that's what we should be talking about. Cause Omarion is the GOAT. I mean, the Melinda. Did you see how Lil Fizz was like, he was like, we're the real ones that's unbothered. And anybody who's hating, yeah, we laughing at y'all. Laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing at y'all. Like, niggas that be on like reality TV just be wanting to raise the ratings so they can have more people watch. Like, that shit is corny. Right. Yo, you know what I was um, like talking about that uh, before, I mean, before we even open. Like, first of all, rest in peace, Juice World. Rest in peace, Juice World. Just like um, raise your glass to that. Yeah, rest in peace, Juice World. Juice World, man. If I could pour it on, you know what I'm saying for the homies, I pour it. Not in the house. That's what they do. All right. That that's what I thought they did. For the homies. Yeah, like Birthday you pour. Homies. Well, well, my brother passed. All his friends was at his graves with Hennessy bottles and everything I pouring all over the. Money. It is. <laughs> like we could just send send the prayers up and say, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, you know, I waste money on my dogs. You can have a whole bottle, baby. I don't think my dog would want me to waste money. Period. You're probably like, yo, keep that, bro. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, people show their respect differently, so it's all, it is what it is. <laughs> um, speaking of that, I was saying, like, how niggas be doing shit to raise ratings, like, how, uh, what we thought was the case with, what's the, the, the dude, I think it was gay, from, um, that stupid ass show, Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett, okay. Yeah, what what about uh, Empire? Oh, Empire. Yeah, what about it? <laughs> you think, so you know, so you, you, you still think Jesse Smollett's. That's what I was saying. So, what I was about to say is like, we thought we thought he was doing that for the ratings. The whole time he got fired, the whole time now. Chicago it's questionable. Under, it's questionable. All the dirt they done hit over on this case so that could have supported so many things that Jesse was saying that they hid yeah. throughout this case, you know. <laughs> was so he I, lying? So if I said, I don't know if I said it, but if I did, I apologize. I don't know if I said it. Oh, that's so nice of you to do because there's not going to be a lot of people who apologize to Jesse for slandering him yeah, yeah. and good. dragging him. I, I think I was speaking on the point of okay. it's not cool to actual, like, mm -hmm. if something don't happen to mm -hmm. this happen. But again, I don't remember. So if I ever did, I want to apologize for it. To me, it's a prime example of people speaking when you know all the facts mm -hmm. and not getting partial and having a whole judgment and conniption on things that you have no idea back end or front details. Yo, you want these, like, conniption? What, what, what does that mean? Like, the direct definition? So conniption, like, I don't know, like, I was, for me, like, quick frenzy, like, uh, conniption. Um, I don't know. I don't know the whole you definition. The word, like, I do, but, like, I haven't, like, go like, I haven't pulled up the definition in a long time. I just know the word and how to use it. But, like, the actual definition, like, conniption, like, um, damn, now I really wish I knew the actual verbiage behind it. But, like, just a conniption, like, a, a brief, I don't know, moment of distress, maybe? What? Okay. Huh? So I was finding for us, but um, uh, he gonna find it for us. A fit of rage or hysteria. Say it again. A fit of rage. A fit of rage. A fit of so I was right. right yeah, I know. I know. Excuse me. I know how to use the I'm motherfucker word. I just didn't I have know. the complete verbiage of detail behind the word, but I knew it was like, like I said, frenzy, rage, fit of rage, like just like you know. Long story short, they was doing conniptions over Jesse Smollett, not having knowing conniptions. having conniptions. Excuse me. Look, he ain't even know the word. Now he. At least come. a lot of niggas be scared. I'm not not Jay. <laughs> like when you first heard the word aesthetic. See, a nigga like me, I just want this shit to look good. Mm -hmm. So they come in like, mm -hmm. nah, you gotta have an aesthetic. Aesthetically like, pleasing. You know I'm like, what? Fair, what? like how we have the green couch and the green, you know, gray and yellow painting. Shout out to you know. Lee for that. Baby, we did that together. Oh, uh, yeah, we did. Clap it up for us. Hey, um, so, uh, they was having a connection. You know who else does that? My line brother, Brandon. Shout out to Brandon. I hate that nigga. He be just, he be throwing out words in the chat. And I be like, but shout out to the iPhone. <laughs> Every time you throw the word, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I highlight it and put look up. Yeah. All right, that's what yep. all right, well, shout out to Brandon, too, for that, because he be giving me all the words I don't know. Well, yeah. Um, you know what's funny? What? Before you go, a lot of, so, you learn a lot of words by reading. Like, you you never directly, like, know the definition, but when you once you read it in a... Uh, 
like a phrase or like the the place setting is supposed to be in, you know how to use it next time. I only re you know half the words I know because I work in the government and I got to read a whole bunch of useless documents and I'll be like, oh, and find something. The subtle plug, I work in the government, basically I'm getting money. No, no, no. That was like no, a subtle no, no. plug. It's no. cool though. Um, no, I was just saying that's the only reason why I know big words. It's yeah, not because yeah, I study yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we, <laughs> let's get into it. Boom. Hey, yeah. uh, Jim and I scope your podcast. Uh, for, again, rest in peace, Juice World. Rest in peace. Um, he was definitely a huge influence on Damn. a lot of the young artists. Yeah. Uh, he was 21 years yeah. old. He said he died from a seizure. Um, yeah. They didn't say the reason. But yeah, they, they didn't say the reason. I have, you know, some blog sources that I look up that, you know, fairly has a lot of the truth behind things. I know I did see a post regarding drugs, Percocets, and ecstasy, and using these excessive levels of pills, mm -hmm. causing, you know, these type of breaks through the body, mm -hmm. a seizure. Um, and I just, I feel so bad because I really hate, for whatever reason, a young pa person passed, you know, sometimes like we lost, you know, XXX, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He, that way or this way, to mm -hmm. me, it all hurts me the same because I'm like, damn, they're so young. They so talented, they just make it out. They finally are a break in a lot of their family, building them their own legacy, you know, helping out their family now, taking their mom to places that their mom probably never even imagined, all to lose their son so young. Mm -hmm. It's it's like, it really hurts me. Um, I, I definitely think, I, I can't say for sure that is the reason, but I know that those things do speed stuff like that up. Yeah. So I definitely always want to encourage, like you know, the young folks, like yo, you don't have to be, you don't have to do that. That's a fact. Substance That's abuse a fact. isn't the way. Also, you know, be lit in your spirit all the time, so where you're just high off life. Like you don't have to be high off a drug all the time. As you could be champagne, champagne and champagne. We ain't gonna drink five bottles of these right now. You know what I'm saying? No, some niggas do. I'm sorry to them men. Hey man, <laughs> who knows your vice is your vice. All yeah. I can say is, uh, just be careful. Take it easy. And stay prayed up uh, because at the end of the day, God got his plan. He got his time mm -hmm. and his clock for you. What mm -hmm. I will say is, and I hope it don't sound too like, crazy, but when I seen it, it was like, yeah, I'm sad that it had to be him. But another part of me was like, yeah, I'm so glad that he didn't get killed or like, like yeah, like those deaths to me just being in that light, it 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 gives you. It makes you more depressed or not even depressed. Like, it, just, it puts you in a state of mind is like, damn, like yeah. it's really killing anybody yeah. that's doing something positive. So it's like one side that I'm of course I'm glad yeah. he had to, to pass away so yeah. young. But it's like, man, damn, I'm so glad he didn't get killed or something like yeah. that. Gun down and shit like that. It's uh, crazy because to me, like, I just look at it all as just like life has no yeah. Yeah. regard. Like 100%. anything can happen, like anything, like and at any given moment, which is the scary part, whether he was gunned down or a seizure, to me it just is like, yo, do what you gotta do because you never know when life is about to come knocking at your door and you don't have time to not be living out your whole life to your fullest potential because you never know when that's your last time. So, you know, our Peter Juice world, like, you know what I mean? I pray for his family and all his loved ones who's gonna go through this tough time. Morning is a, a time, but you gotta take your time, you know what I mean? So. RP to Juice World. World. Y'all know, um, if y'all don't know, we record on Sundays. We drop the audio on Monday. Yes, we got the email yes. blast. We probably send it to you Sunday night. Uh, we drop video on YouTube Wednesday. Uh, keep up with the schedule, please. Follow us, subscribe to the uh, channel, Mr. J Hill. Um, send us your email either here, Bay underscore or Mr. Underscore J Hill on social media, all social media. Um, yeah, just please stay up with the schedule so y'all know when we when we going when we dropping. You know what I'm saying, keep and on when we popping. We're gonna be dropping a, uh, the date for the live podcast soon. Not not yet though, because hold your horses. Yeah, we're not giving it above ourselves. But y'all better come fuck be with us. Because we could do one right now, but we just want to keep. Yeah, like we want to keep right. right, right yeah. Fair. Um, you look good. Oh, thank you. So, as you know, we always coming through with some new drip. Today we both actually oh, have one. Hey, I was like, <laughs> today <laughs> today we both have on Milani. You know what I'm saying? I got on this two-piece set. It's a little sweatsuit, little comfy action going on here. It's red, giving me a pop of color. Like you like how I just gave it a little sizzle and a little yeah, sizzle. A little drip, drip. A little, you know what yeah, I mean? Sprinkle. Little white dude that salt Bay. Uh, uh, salt Bay. Mm -hmm. I can't call him that. That's gay. Salt? You said Salt Bay. I mean, you said it already. Yeah, I did. So. Damn. Period. <laughs> I just wanted to cut with the. Uh, <laughs> 
What? We supposed to like put money in there every time we curse. Oh we my god, we say we cuss so much that we're so. My mom said to me like, "Oh my gosh, you guys curse so much." I'm like, mom, don't watch it, please. Just give me a break. I know, like, I be feeling bad because when I go back and listen to it, I'm like, "Damn, you cuss so much." Like. Forgive us, y'all, but we are going to do it. We didn't do it today because I feel like I got a lot to say, so I'm probably going to cuss. But next week's challenge, we're going to do a pot. And every time we cuss, we got to put some money in the pot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And at the end, whoever has the least amount of money because they cuss the less, get to take all the money. Oh, well, I don't have any money to put in the pot, so. You better find some coin. I'm going to just stop cursing. All right, I'm going to just stop cursing. We'll see. I, I have no bread to put in no pot. Uh, <laughs> Shout out the holiday season. Yeah, so keep, keep it going, yo. I got on the Milani as well. Got the sweatsuit, uh, zip up game action. Got the uh, Milani on uh, the waistband. Yeah. It's a little cool, cool situation. You know what I'm saying? I'll have my guy Milani. Uh, Milani on Instagram. M O L A N I. You got it? You got the whole thing? M O L A N I, Milani the brand. Yep. So it's underscore Milani, underscore M O L A N I. Also go to the website www.milanibrand.com. Mm -hmm. That's M O L A N I B R A N D dot com. Uh, he got a lot of new things that he just dropped. So he got this long sleeve tee that's hard too. I'm actually yeah. that. We both wore it. Like he had, I had this cute tee that I wore the other day to dinner. It was so cute. He, you wore one yesterday. Yeah, had the long sleeve tee. Yeah, yeah. He got some heat. Look, I'm yeah. glad we're not doing the pot because <laughs> bang. Shout out to Milani Brand. Shout out to Milani. Uh, Milani Shout out Milani. Yeah, yeah. So, um, can we get into this podcast? Let's get into this podcast. Oh my God. So, we missed last week's podcast. Oh, wow. Sips glass. Sips glass. So, so you know, it's been a long two weeks. First of all, you know, oh, you're gonna tell why, I'm going wow. to. Let me run my course, all right? Because I got I got all I need to say, okay? So first of all, hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, so as you know, the week that we didn't miss was the week of Thanksgiving. And it was so much going on that week that I don't even know where to begin. But I'm going to start somewhere, okay? So, uh, uh, Friendsgiving. <laughs> <laughs> so, boom. Niggas don't even know. Should we? I mean, we can. Okay, I'm going to... Just hush, okay. So, Friendsgiving. Friendsgiving was lit. So basically, Jay and his line brothers had a party and called it Friendsgiving. Whole time, it was a party. It was lit, a lot of liquor, had a grand time. We had a lot of fun. Who child the ghetto? So as you know, me and Jay do our whole growing through the growing pain situation. That night, we had a whole shit show, okay? It was bad. Um, a lot of emotion plagued up from this night. Um, it ended with Jay called the cops on me. Wow. Look yeah. at Niggas in the back is looking because they nobody yeah. heard this story. Yeah, like, he, he called the cops on me. He hey, called the cops on me. He sure did. So, boom. Okay, so I'll just, I'm going to just be 100 honest. So, we had a great night. I, I consumed a lot of liquor. Um, me and Jay had gotten into it a little bit in the party over a misunderstanding. Oh, <laughs> in the party, it was a little bit until like just relax, all right? We got into it, you know what I mean, over some misunderstanding. And the night in the party ended me with me calling him a bitch ass nigga in front of his friends. I really didn't Most mean it. Times. I didn't mean it. I did call him that. And in front of my mom's. What the fuck? I mean, yo, you gonna give it, you gonna give it all to I'm you. gonna get there. <laughs> I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. I go, go, go. He's so pressed. So basically, boom, I was really upset about something. I was also drinking. I felt disrespected, which it wasn't the right thing to do in the time. You know, can't you could take the girl out the hood. You can't take the girl, you know, the hood out the girl all the time. Oh, I went. From, from, like, I'm from PG Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut. Don't get it fucked up. So Don't. Like from like, like PG can't like. I've never been from Anne Arundel, PG County, none of that. What is wrong with you? Oh, like Silver Spring? I went to high school in Silver Spring. Yes, I did, but I'm from Connecticut. Like that should look nice down there. What about it? Like Silver Spring or like? Yeah, my mom moved me out the hood to go live in a nice life. Real Bel Air story. But you was from there. I thought she was from there. Yeah. I'm from Connecticut. I I'm lived there till I was 15, 16. I, I, know, I know. So long story short, I have a hot temper that I've been working on for a long time. And no matter how much we do grow through things, we still do have these lapses. So in an apologetic manner, I will say that I had to be very apologetic for my actions for calling Jay a bitch ass nigga in front of his friends. It was not the prettiest situation. So left with my girl because I was upset, walked out, stormed out real mad. We got upstairs. Jay's mom was here for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. 
So she was here for Thanksgiving and uh, she was sleeping in the living room. Me and my friend went into the bedroom and we were talking. Jay came upstairs and he was about to leave out of here. My friend, trying to be a good friend to both of us, was like, hey, can we just talk about this? You know, and it kind of took a left because Jay was mad. I was mad. Jay was trying to leave. Long story short, we're exchanging words. It got heated in simultaneous manner he's storming out i'm so not i yelled you bitch ass nigga again forgetting that his mom was in the living room so talk about a thanksgiving mind you this is two days before thanksgiving our first thanksgiving which i can say so i'm super excited about this thanksgiving it's our first one that i'm doing you know with a family because we both don't have a lot of family. So typically we spend our Thanksgivings with our friends at their friend's house. So this Thanksgiving was supposed to be very special because this was our first one doing at our own house, everybody coming at us. So it was a very stressful, sad week. It was yeah. a very stressful, sad week that week. I feel like you skipped around the story, but I didn't. I, I mean, you did. Go, go, no, 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 go ahead. Add in what you wanted to add in. First word, you, did a, you did a pretty good job at telling the story. I was trying to. Sub, I mean, you want to go into detail of. I mean, that's what I. Thought. Long story. I mean, I, go well, ahead. I, I mean, you already. You you're did, you did you're not great. gonna call him like we don't have to. Well, but go ahead. Just go I'm ahead and you, fill in what you want to do. What I'm saying is, you did a great job at telling the story. Like, I was commending you for that. Okay, finish adding so, what you would like to add in. My pro- you finish out telling your side of the story. It wasn't a side. I was just breaking it down. But go ahead. If right, you so want to tell the whole good, story, go ahead. From my view, right. And first of all, shout out to uh, Shadi for uh, breaking it down like that because she did a really good job. Like, she definitely did a really good job. But, let me get into it, right? So, we had the, uh, the motherfucking uh, the Friendsgiving. And the Friendsgiving was fun. And that, but, So, from my perspective, right now that it's over, I think, like, we both was having a good time, right? And you know how when you're having a good time and somebody interrupt your good time? It's like it just puts you in a different mood. So like I think from my perspective, I think like Shade was having her good time, I was having my good time, and then I did something to interrupt her good mood, which shifted her mood. And in response, she did something to like mess up my good time and it shifted my mood and then like class, right? So like everything she said was right. Um are you sure you good? You ain't fine? You right? When you just repost a what I've been just posted, did I ah, check that, that, on that, you? Go on, right, man. So, so, uh, so basically, like, um, the situation downstairs, we was arguing about just something or whatever. Then she wanted me to say something to my friend because I said something to her about something that was done or whatever. But she felt like I was being hard on her and not being fair in the situation. And you could correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so she was upset. So she was talking to her friend from my perspective, and I was, ta- I was talking to my friend. However, I was a little loud. I, I didn't have to do that, you know what I'm saying? But I was upset, and then I was talking to my friend knowing I could have just deaded it. Like, and that's where I go with the whole, um, what we always talk about, like, man and woman um, stereotypes. Nah, not stereotypes. Uh, double double standards. standards? So like, as a man. Yo, honestly, Jay talk about double standards every episode. He I, means... I, Nah, he really, means business. Yeah, so like that, like that was a double standard that I should have lived up to. Honestly, my girl was upset. She was talking to a girl, and I mean, y'all can drag me for this if you want, but I feel like that's what girls do. Like girls get upset, they run their miles, right? So like, I mean, of course y'all gonna drag me, but whatever. As a man, I should have took that. As a man. <laughs> now, I'm, I mean, as a, well, how your know? face was last week. <laughs> As a man. But no, so like, honestly, as a man, I should have just deaded that. Like, I should have let her be in her feelings, whatever, you know what I'm saying, and just walked away. Like, but I fed into it by like going to my line brother talking to him. Then she Out loud so I could hear him. Like, how you talking about me in front of yeah, me? I, I, like, because I wanted to show her that like, nigga, I'll talk to anybody. Like, because she was upset that I wasn't talking to my line brother about the, the wrong that he was doing. I'm like, nigga, I ain't scared yeah, of Hold on, before Tim watches, I never said Tim did anything wrong. I said, I'm mean, talking to me. Fine. It's fine, it's fine, like, it's okay. Tim, I ain't say that. I, <laughs> That's not what I said. Okay. Like, you know, we know. Like, it was a wild, it was a wild, it was a wild night. Hold on, first of all, I just want to make it clear, the friends give it a lot that went on after it was not just my episode okay right, right, right. it was so, everybody was yeah, wilding so I, <laughs> like she was just mad i ain't say that so i'm like well you know me ben, I'm, the I'm like well yeah bro i'm just telling them like i ain't i'm just trying to show her that i would say something to anybody for real that was wasn't really the best idea so she got upset that's when she you know what i'm saying went into the, the whole episode of what we just talked about you a bitch ass nigga not nice don't repeat that i'm just saying what what yeah, he's talking so, about let it slide and i come upstairs to try to like grab my stuff 
And I'm trying to dip. And her friend is trying to be like the Hercule, like, like, the. <laughs> Shout out, <laughs> like, Shout out to Mina. Shout out to Javina. Poor Javina. You know what I'm saying? The year's almost over. Like, you could have let that rock, but <laughs> shout out to her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so she wouldn't let me leave out the room. Like, I'm trying to dip. And then we tried to talk. We both upset. It just wasn't smart. It just wasn't smart. But basically, you got into it. So I was saying, yeah. Yeah. Job, yeah. And, then, and then what happened is when Jay was trying to leave, Javina was still trying to hold him in the door. Jay, no matter the situation, if he feels it's about to escalate, Jay's calling the cops. Facts. I, yo, listen. I respect it to a certain degree. Nah. I respect it. He just doesn't want anything to escalate because he has a fear of accidentally, you know, losing his temper and get to a thing. You know, just he doesn't play the domestic violence thing. So, like, no. Javina was holding the door, and once he seen her, like, holding the door for him to go out, he was like, you know what? I'm calling the cops. Like, and he called the cops. So that's how the cops got called, not because... That's not cool. Well, both of us... So we both... Here's the thing. Because I don't want people looking at it like, yo, I commend you for that. Not yeah, hits but you got to know when and when not to. Right. Like, we were drunk. We, you know what I'm saying? That enhances a lot of things. But all that to say, first of all, you know. I was wrong too. So. Yeah. So that led me to, like, an important question through that process. So one, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to all tie in, right? Mm -hmm. The first question is, what are things you think that you have overcame in life that kind of pops up occasionally and triggers and then takes you right back there? Um, there's a lot. Can we pause for a second? For a second. Okay. So we can okay. stay on track, right? Okay. So um, remember that. Yeah. So all right, basically gotcha. that was Friendsgiving. Right. The whole point of us talking about Friendsgiving is why we missed last episode. Right. So right. Going in, leading into that, it, we always just had a lot of feelings that was uh, escalated, that mm -hmm. we're still holding on to, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, Shade didn't feel like the family Oriented, you know what I'm saying? She just mm -hmm. ain't feel right because we just had, like we we broke up. I was like, mm -hmm. it was just yeah. Nah, we boyfriend and girlfriend like. I'm just, First of all, we fake broke up. up. Shut up. You know all right, because it wasn't real breakup. Because we, I mean, we said we was done. we said we said we was done for a couple hours. We did. Relate. Nah, I get it. I just want to so say like, he ain't leave me for real. Yeah, like so. he we, he said, and then we kept talking and wouldn't stop talking through the like. So you really just gone? Mm -hmm. So you so it was a lot of that. Harboring and those we could we still had emotions. Yeah, like talk about yeah. So the day we supposed to shot the, the podcast, we still had just some it's underlying issues that we really had to work through. And we so we talked about it. And <laughs> the time we were supposed to shoot, like I was like just done, like man, yeah. fuck this conversation. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, we it's not recording. And that's basically why I went record because yeah. of friends giving it. This was like it was oh, a re but, right, right. And respect. Um, but even after that, we still just had was holding on some things. Mm -hmm. We had a conversation the other day, and like. We was it just it got to the level of like arguing, but at the end of it, we really gained an understanding of each other. And again, like remember your question though. I don't want to get wrong. I remember. But it's it's crazy because we came into the relationship like we didn't have a we didn't we didn't come into the relationship like let's be friends. You know what I'm saying? We need mm -hmm. to know each other, so we still get to know know each other. Yeah, you know every, day, every day, every day. And then sometimes like she'll see things that she don't yeah. like about me, I'll vice versa, you know what I'm saying? So the fact that we can talk about that yeah. and break it down is so dope to right. me. Like, that's my Hell yeah, yeah. You know, you know it's crazy because like a lot of people like, you know, when when we when we're doing this, we're welcoming both sides, right? So we're gonna have the people who's like, oh my God, you know, the, you know like, right? Tripping. You're gonna have the other sides that relate. And realistically to me, anytime you choose to grow with somebody, you are going to go through the currents, <laughs> high tide, <laughs> low tide, because we are constantly <laughs> unraveling ourselves to somebody. So you really, if the person is a good person and worth it, y'all can work through to paradise. I'm not saying to take on things that's unbearable for you though. You get what I mean? Me and Jay have an understanding of we're gonna communicate and we're gonna we're gonna heal and get through and work on whatever we need to get through that's to get hard, to the though. end of the paradise. And Don't it's hard. You know what I'm saying? Twisted. Especially because we are both like big personalities and uh, you know, we don't really we're, we're we're like we're so different, we're the same. And it, and it's crazy. Right. You know what I mean? And that's so why I, that goes into why yeah. we created the podcast. So for people that are thinking Gemini Scorpio is gonna be about astrology. Just no, the hell it's not. I never it's told you. Really <laughs> it's really because we're so strong-minded. Yep. We really disagree on a lot. Yeah. But the respect is so... Because we yeah. have our own way of thinking. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's why we understand it. So we're like, yo, let's create a podcast to show people our thinking. Real life. Right. Real so that, life. So it ain't nothing about astrology. I want to yeah. clear it up, clear it up. And that's basically why we didn't record 004 
last week. That's the, right. So and then we the then it was a cool scapegoat though because it's Thanksgiving. We was like, all right, let's just take the right. Thanksgiving break off because yeah. cool. So we're um, gonna keep it real with y'all. We was on some shit. We was on some yeah, we was on some bullshit. Yeah, we was on bullshit. Um, so all that to say, through that process of what I went through of just going through the motions, it's two things that it led me towards. So the one was the first question I said, like, what are things that we have thought we came overcame throughout our life tempers you know how we deal with situations our reaction and things like that and we don't really know that we're not fully over it until something happens and it's like oh my god like i did that again so all that to say right so you ain't drinking though bro. yes i am my shit today all right hold on. yeah this is crazy i took a big go but that it's like <laughs> i wonder if you could hear that on camera mm -hmm. Why all right, boom. Oh, every week you do some bullshit on camera that made me just like. Why would you all I did was swallow, bro. I didn't mean it like that. Like it was champagne, champagne showers. Right, okay, right. boom. Sorry. What, bro? It's a sh Come shout on, out to. Bro. I ain't gonna tell you the bottle because we not getting no money for that. So, bullshit. boom. So back to, <laughs> so back to what the fuck I was saying, right? So all that said, right? So in my past, like you know. Like I said, when I'm mad, you know, I, and I, I see a lot of girls that say this, like when I'm mad, like I'm a whole different person or they'll say things like, oh, my mouth when I'm mad or like how I, you know what I'm saying? And I think it was something that growing up, like, you know, my mom is the same thing. Wait, like you piss her off, she cuss you out like a sailor, say the most disrespectful things. She doesn't mean it in that way, but she's upset. All that to say is growing up and going through my own process, I thought that I actually conquered this, right? So growing through a process, because even in the beginning of me and Jay, like I would say little things when I was upset and going through that process, he's like, no, like just because you're upset, it does not make it right. Or just because it's justified doesn't mean you should do it because wrong is wrong, right? So you go through this process. So I'm like, yeah, I don't need to do that because when I'm upset, I can channel my emotions and deal with it and you know, I don't have to go flying off the hinges and my mouth, I don't got to say nothing because, you know, if, if I, I know the ground I stand on and I know where I stand, you don't have to open your mouth. And then guess what? Thanksgiving week, I folded. And I was like, oh my God. Like, and I was really mad at myself the next day because I was like, I'm past that. I don't even do that. I don't even need to do that. If you know me from my younger days, yeah, I know what the fuck going on. All that to say, you know, I was past that. So it led me to believe that we constantly like work on things. And a lot of times we get maybe not on a high horse, but just like, you know, I don't do that. Like I ain't the whole time you just haven't done it because you haven't been in the situation to tested. do it. You haven't been tested to do it. Yep. Right. So what is something that maybe you think like you've overcome, but you might still need to do a little more work with. Uh, That's one of mine, by the way. Right, so That's one of mine. Um, if we want to talk about the uh, the previous past, past situation, because a lot of times you really don't know until yeah. you get into the situation. Like, yeah. I thought I overcame this. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, so with me, honestly, I, I feel like I always say to myself that like, I know so much at a young age because I, I I messed up so much. Mm -hmm. So when you mess up a lot, you learn from that. Yeah, thing. yeah. But not necessarily. So I said to say the whole calling the police thing, right? Um. So one part of me is like, all right, I got over like getting into these arguments, or not even just calling the police. Like I say, like me, I walk away from a conversation, right? Like we, if we arguing, and I don't want to raise my tone, I feel like I gotta get to a level of being disrespectful. I walk away. However. As good as that sounds, it ain't always balanced correctly, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, that's something that I thought I got over. However, sometimes it can come off rude. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes we can be in the middle of a conversation, and then I just end the conversation. Like, right. my nigga, like, you, just, you don't do that like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, right. it, you just don't do it like that. Also, of like, you know what I'm saying? Call the police. Like, it's just like, you got to choose your battles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not... Granted... Yeah. It sounds good. Yeah. But you gotta, like, that wasn't really the time mm -hmm. to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So, to ask you a question. Well, I'm gonna tell you why it wasn't the time because it was a day before Thanksgiving. If I did go to jail, I would have been in there till after Thanksgiving on a Sunday. Not even that, though. It was just like. And then. Yeah, I, I, it just wasn't. Not even, it's, <laughs> not, it just wasn't. I didn't have to do that. Like, just, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like life threatening. Yeah. It's just, I'd be so scared, but that's just no excuse. It's like, bro, no. just. 
don't but but it, it, behind that reason it makes sense though yeah. like you know what i mean like because there will be not with us but in general like somebody may go through that time where it is doing too much and you do need to call the cops yeah. because you don't want to find yourself in a position where now you have a domestic violence charge because you just didn't call the police and got the proper help um, that you needed in that time because some girls do be off the chain but to like, like i guess to, to, to put it in perspective of like something i'm still working on yeah this, uh especially like communication so as good yeah. as, as good as I think I am with communicating, I'm still not as good because sometimes yeah. like I hog on a lot of things trying mm-hmm. to do the right thing. But just choosing what's the right thing, thing what's choosing like when to speak up, right? Because sometimes like it'll be a lot of things going on that I just personally don't like. And I'll be trying to be the bigger man yeah. and not say something and really just like, yeah. you know saying? All right, I'm going to just let it go. But yeah. uh, eventually it comes back and bite me in my ass. So I think that's something I'm working on, yeah. just speaking up when I really yeah. feel the need to speak up. That's good. So, that's I, yeah, like all that to say. I think everybody has like you know certain things that they're still working on. Like we think we're over, but again, because we're not directly putting my, ourselves in that situation. Like I read. Um, so long story short, um, after that week, you know that Sunday, I kept urging myself to go to church. I was like, you really need to go to church. Like you know what I mean? Not because like what I did was like I thought was so profoundly wrong. Sometimes I like to find back a balance or a grounding, and that's where I find mine at. Right. right. So all that to say that Sunday I did not get to go. Monday, I get to work. I kept promising myself, okay, you didn't go to a church on Sunday, but on Monday when you get to your desk, watch it online, right? So I watch it online. And one thing that uh, the pastor, shout out to Pastor Marshall at Zion Church. Um, one thing that he said was, he was like, sometimes you think that by not going in the direction, you're saving yourself, but you actually got to go gotta, through it. Yeah, yeah. You got to go towards 100%. it to get all the tools you need running to help you, you, running from it won't save you. So all that to say, what will happen is I just keep myself out of situations that will make me react that way. And I think it's the right thing because it's like, oh, I don't put myself in positions to be that person or do these things. But sometimes those positions are to come right to you. So you got to run towards it, grab all the tools you need mm-hmm. and get it done. So that's, that's, a, that's yeah. a great set. Yeah. So it's like you had... Your, your segues would have been perfect, but it's still perfect because, like, that's a great segue. Yeah. You know, when I was talking to about, like, liking girls, they go out. So, like, <laughs> right. Sade, like, Sade will be like, I don't put my, like, so I, I party or whatever. Like, I mean, I host events, so like, yeah. that's what I do. So, it was one podcast, she was like, I don't put myself in those positions. Yeah. So, honestly, because you don't put yourself in those positions, do I know you're really going to be faithful to me? Because, I mean, if you ever mm-hmm. tested it. I'm just saying, like, hold on. Get See, he about to nigger. take it. He about to you know take it far. Because let me tell you something right now. I'm always in the position to duck that baby. Because oh. niggas is coming at me everywhere. Like, really? yeah, at work, at the mall, at the bank, at the, the grocery mall. store. Oh, I can't even run into store, the damn beauty what? supply store if a nigga riding by, he winding out his window. So for you to say, I don't know if I could trust you niggas when you in those, pers- you those positions you. because you ain't putting yourself in those positions. See, those positions, I live in them. Like, I'm a female. Like, you know how it go. When you a female and you attractive, when you a female and you attractive, you can't really go nowhere without somebody. Hey, shorty, look, and you think. And you be responding to these niggas. How did I say that? Or you said you don't be in the position. And I said it's always a position for that. Did I say that? See, wow. Look, look, baby, don't, 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 don't. Look, he about to. (laughs) Are you done? So, all that to say, boom, that was why we did not record that Sunday, which also brought me to another point that I wanted to talk about, which was seasonal depression and anxiety. So, let me. Oh my God. It it took me to a whole nother level. So what happened was we had this fight on Tuesday. It's giving all these emotions. Now I'm stressed out about Thanksgiving because my perfect family is having our first Thanksgiving dinner this week to avoid seasonal depression. And here we are, I feel alone. I feel like my family's like not in a good place. His mom's here and you know, we just had this moment and I don't have a lot of family as it is. So I'm instantly just down. Right. Like, so even like, it was to the point where I told Jay, I didn't even want to do it anymore because I could not see it going the way that I planned it. It's not the way we, you know, it wasn't supposed to be like Forget this. that, bro. I just want to give a major shout out to Shorty right to my right. Yo, oh my, yo. The food was incredible. Shit was crazy. She showed you she got up at like six o'clock. Oh my God. 
I cook Shout from fucking six to two. I just want to say, to I'm 29 years old. This was my first time hosting Thanksgiving dinner. Ah, uh, shout amazing. out to grandmas who's done that every fucking year. Because let me fucking tell you, cooking from six to three, four, oh my, I was so tired. It's so hard. And what's hard is not prepping all. It's not cooking all the food. It's that every meal has a different prep. And if you cook, you know that prep time can be more or just as much as the cook time and it's so like what peeling the potatoes cutting the peppers and onions and things basing and and, and browning me and thank you that's it i will sure. say i had to pat myself on the back if you don't know these hands do go to work in the kitchen i so, do get it yo, done segue. yeah so quick second yeah a lot of people been talking about like uh leftovers and we can talk oh this, yeah this goes for a christmas so tree. what i will say <laughs> what i learned what i, yeah. I, I learned from our um yeah so I'm a big um, leftover guy. Mm -hmm. However, you gotta be careful because some things just aren't not even as good. Some things you just shouldn't have for leftover. Leftover, like yeah, yeah. The, um, the oh, leftovers. we had the rasta pasta Man, after yeah, we yeah. the first two days. It was good, but like by the third, fourth day, because what happened was I was making extra pans so that we could have extras. But certain things you cannot just let like string along because like the sauce gets different yeah. the 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 sogginess of like the peppers the onions and the salt like it just yeah, created like this good. yeah so, so after after three to, like honestly i hear a lot of people who don't even like leftovers yeah but speaking That's of tripping, but, yeah, yeah no i love leftovers so what i did with the turkey the next day we made biscuits and turkey and eggs on the biscuit was jelly Man, and butter it was so good so we definitely abused our leftovers but something i learned on holiday season that I didn't know. I didn't know when you go to somebody's house, you're actually not supposed to take anything. Damn. I've, I just found this out. I found out that it's etiquette. You, When somebody invites you to their Thanksgiving dinner or a big family dinner and they're hosting it and they prepared and funded all the food, you're supposed to bring something you eat and you're not supposed to bring anything. Yeah, no. That is new to me. I never knew that. Also, um, you can bring like, yo, you can bring money because not even just from us. Like I heard somebody else talking about this. Yo, you have no idea how much Yo, oh, hosting to, Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's not easy. Yo, that's a lot of money. Another thing, um, it's a lot of, of money. Speaking on season of depression, yo, that shit is so real. But shout out to friend family. Like, oh yeah, family, yeah, definitely. Like, friends, definitely. Like, please do not take them for granted. Like, yeah, I know a lot of times with me, right? Like when I was growing up, I would stay. Yeah, I, gotta, I call my brother. I would stay at his his family, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I wish this was my family. And I know it's easier said than done, but please. Act as if that's your friend. Yeah, if that really is your yeah. family. Because I, when we had our Thanksgiving, those were the people that came. Like yeah, they still. Had yeah, family. Yeah. that had then pulled up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But they came to ours. So it's like so one thing. Yeah, it. like because like you know I think it's dope because you know I, um, a lot of my family is overseas, um, and I don't have my grandmother was here, and my brother was here, but they both passed. They lived in New York. So other than that, it's just like me, my mom, and my little brother. Mm -hmm. Everybody else lives like Jamaica, Trinidad, etc. So. I never really, outside of my mom never really being big on cooking a Thanksgiving dinner, I never actually had, you know, family that here that cooked it. So I spent all my Thanksgivings at friends. Shout out to T. Shout out to just all my friends that I pulled up and always made me feel at home because that's always a blessing. And um, Shout out to T. Family. Oh, oh yeah, not nah, tea family nah, wallet. <laughs> no, no, no. That's goal. That's goals of uh of where I'm trying to go for my Thanksgiving dinner. I'm talking about the layout, pretty Thanksgiving, big table. You know, we live in like a more modern new temple stainless steel apartment but they live in the house and they have the whole Let's thanksgiving see, table and the nice silverware that's where i want to be okay, and go. next year shout out to so, them because they did they do help yeah, host a great thanksgiving they host a great thanksgiving yo you yeah you violated it i ain't gonna lie like that shit was so good. just a question for cookouts right like so now that i'm learning this etiquette of like when you go to people's housing is it the same for cookouts so to me I didn't really agree with the you know. that you wrote up, but I, yeah. I agree. I agree, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I found out. I didn't. Yeah. I never followed that rule because you know I go to my people and they be like, "Oh, take food home. Yeah, we'll bring yep, a Tupperware, or whatever." But I found out that that is actually not proper etiquette. Yeah, it depends. It's depending who it is. Yeah. It, of course. Yeah. But maybe not. Act. So let me tell you about Jay. Jay was like, "Y'all yeah. come in here. Y'all eat all y'all want in here, but don't take no food home." Yeah. <laughs> nah, because I'm big on left. Like, yeah, he loves leftovers. Okay, it's not even just that. It's just like I'm. Yeah. I'm. Oh, see, I'm frugal. And I don't mind saying no mm -hmm. camera. So like for me, I understand 
how hard it is to to prepare food, to have food, no. shit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Throughout the week, you get what I'm saying? So when we're having something, if everybody yeah. takes everything, we already just emptied our entire yeah. budget. Yeah, so because we take it, we yeah. literally don't have anything else through the yeah. week. So we yeah. just like. Yeah, just help a nigga out. Yeah, needs to be broke. But yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Like, yeah, it turned it turned out great though. It's turned it turned out great. I mean, um, so all that to say, I was going like, even though Thanksgiving turned out week great though, I was still suffering from a side of just feeling like holidays just never gonna be perfect because I never experienced them perfect, right? So, and I think a lot of people live like that. Uh, shout out to Brittany Garrett because I seen her post how she intentionally actually spent Thanksgiving alone. Mm. She was like, she cooked her own meal, she stayed at home, and she was because she got tired of going to her family's house and dealing with like toxic situations and situations that, you know, put her feeling less than of going. So she ends up now spending them alone, which because I didn't have the perfect thanksgiving that i wanted i it kind of dawned on me like damn like is this what the holidays really do to people is this what comes about through the holidays of just feeling like damn like you know it's never going a holiday is just not going to be what i've i what i see it should be i've never experienced it so maybe i shouldn't take the holidays as serious Man, I don't know. I disagree because I feel like if no. I'm, that was a question, oh, not so like it I wasn't a point. I think that if you like the holidays, you should mm -hmm. take it as serious as mm -hmm. you want. Um, so it's funny that you said that because I, I always compare like anything that you really care about, care for. I, yeah. I compare it to prom. So I don't know if you remember like um, mm -hmm. your prom season, but so to sit for for women, not for men, right? Mm -hmm. for, maybe for for men too, but for women. When you're going to prom, it seems like everything goes wrong yeah. up into the prom. Facts. Like your yep. hair is not on time. Like what? Like the, yeah. the car? I don't know. Yeah, I don't everything. know. You might have got makeup on your yeah, dress. Like, all, it seems like your, your, your date's late or yeah. it's, a, it's something. Everything yeah. Everything goes wrong. Yeah. But by the end of the night, it's amazing. had an yeah. amazing time. So, so true. for me, right, I feel like it's like that. So Thanksgiving, the lead up to Thanksgiving was crazy. It was yeah. hectic. But... After I, I yeah. can't speak for you, but after for me, I felt great. It was yeah. like, wow, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And granted, after Thanksgiving, we still had our debacle, yeah. whatever, out back and forth. But as far as Thanksgiving, yeah, yeah, no Thanksgiving, was, yeah, it was, great. it was actually so normally like with my daughter because she has a lot of family on her dad's side. For Thanksgiving, I normally send her to her dad's so she could get that whole family feel since I don't have a lot of family. But my daughter actually was with me this Thanksgiving and it was really pleasing to. Her. She came up, she gave me a hug, like mommy, this was so great, and I thought it was dope because again, this was our first our family tradition, you know, as now. So yeah, all that to say, so. You know, with that being said, I guess for seasonal holidays, it really is what works for you and what makes you feel best so speaking in of your Amaya, holiday. Amaya always going to her dad's. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about for things for Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, she always does Christmas with me. So I wanted for to Thanksgiving. talk about just like mm -hmm. the aspect of less. Not this is not mm -hmm. happening in the room. Mm -hmm. us, but yeah, yeah. For some couples, like dating women with children. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like, what are your expectations when you date a man and you have children? Uh, as far as holidays, since we on that? Nah, just period. Um, my expectations, um, I really don't have any. Um, so how I kind of plan it is, you know, obviously if I have a kid, like for me and JJ didn't meet Amaya up front, we got to know each other first and made sure we was taking it serious. And then Amaya got introduced to the picture. And from there, the only thing that I expect, right, is if you fuck with me, you gotta fuck with my kid. And mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't think you could you know, I, I, I've seen it be this way in some relationships where the guy kind of doesn't even acknowledge the kid most. Like, you might say you're hot, but it's almost like, but if we're in a relationship, we're obviously dating and being together with purpose. Like, we're not just here to kick it, right? Especially like with us, with our type of busy lifestyles and the things, our goals and things like that. We don't have time to really just be carrying things along that's not serving a purpose. So all that to say, we have to always find a to make it comfortable for a kid you know what i mean so for Maya, it was we do have to do family things because we have we have to create a bond and a respect in the household because we're moving forward and we're going to be you know a family even if we're not completely right now in the future so we have to do things like i do i don't have expectations because if you don't want to do it that's fine but that's where i'm like all right well 
I like you, but, uh, you know, I have bigger aspirations. Like, so, you know, I do think it's normal that we do family outings, like to the movies, like, or like we do fun things with her. So, she, you know, with, or with you and your this kids is, so that they feel included like and they end, don't though. feel left out. Like, before you even get to that, like, yeah. before we even get to that serious but I still think it's the same so I think like alright boom so like I said for us like you didn't get introduced to Amaya so I knew we were serious so if I know we're serious right now Amaya gets in, or the kid gets introduced because I'm going to say this for what I think for all across the board the kid in, gets introduced to the situation so now it's making the kid comfortable okay right you get what I'm saying so that's why is I said on, on a, on no it, I think it's a growing thing because every kid is not going to take to the person right away see Amaya fucked with Jay from the beginning like problem. you know what I'm saying like from the beginning so but it's not always going to be like that like so you know there might be a time like the kid needs more time to warm up but i think it is has to be intentional on taking you know including the kid in the relationship so it got to be like you know i don't know like something like you know for example my daughter's a girl so like if you take me on date nights I think it's respectable that you take us both out to dinner. You know what I mean? Because she needs is to it see. Serious or not serious? Um, again, you probably won't, for me, you won't really meet my kid unless I know we're serious. Bad, all right, all right. You get what I'm saying? Uh, okay. Now, I personally think that's how it should be, but I'm not knocking those who you know kind of you know filling somebody and they're bringing around them because some moms always have their kid. So like, if they are dating somebody, like they might go out on a couple of dates and invite them over, and the kid is there. I'm not knocking that. I don't do it that way, but I think if that is the case, it still has to be a proper introduction. It was actually a, um, a story that, that popped out mm -hmm. that said that a guy was dating this girl, and well, it wasn't a story. She mm -hmm. actually said that into um, Shade Room? The, the morning. Oh, okay. Show. So okay. Shout out to KYS again. Mm -hmm. Morning Hustle Show, uh, Angie Ange, Orna Jordan, L'Oreal, and Head Crack. Congratulations on every success, success y'all got. Um, But it was a story that uh, a guy was. He wanted to take this girl out on a date. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I apologize. The guy wanted to buy this girl some shoes. Right. And he asked her, like, yo, what size you wear? Yeah. So she said, I wear a size 7. He was like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm about to get you these Jordans or whatever that just mm -hmm. came out. And she was like, nah, just get me a 13Y for my for my, mm -hmm. for my kid. And he was like, nah, never mind. I'm good. Ooh. And, yeah. All right, so this is how I feel about that. Because I kind of had a friend who dealt with the same thing. You had a friend or? No, nah, I really did have a friend. No, dead ass. I'm going to tell you. You'll see, you'll see what I... <laughs> All right, all right, Here you right. go. So this is how I feel, right? I'm never just asking for a friend here. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not just asking for a friend. I just seen this situation before, so I'm like, damn, that is it's, it's fucked up because I know people like I know that I've seen that situation before. Right. So this is how I look at it, right? I don't need a nigga to do nothing for my kid. Nothing, zero, period. You get what I'm saying? Um, and I don't even date with the intentions that. You need, like, you know, if it all comes out of that, like, I'm gonna need you to buy her shoes. Like, so for me, I want, no, give me my Jordans. Cause I'm, if you buy mine, thank you. Cause now I don't gotta buy mine and my daughters. I could just buy my daughters. I could save some money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because normally, well, what happened? I just went and buy them for myself, but I'd buy them for her. So what's he Like, you know what I mean? not fucking with her at that point? Um, I'm not saying he's not, okay, so this one, I don't think he's wrong. Cause preference, right? Um, I think it could have been a conversation. Right. You know what I mean? Like, but it's also depending how deep they were in. If he just was like, nah, I'm good. But like honestly, I think some ladies are just too comfortable. Like you're too bold. Like, why like honestly, me personally, because I don't need a nigga to do nothing for my kid. So me personally, if a nigga's buying me something, I'm not gonna be like, are you gonna buy it for me and my daughter? Or can you just buy it for her, not for me? Like, thank you for buying it for me. Cause now again, I do not have to spend double the money. I still get a break for regardless. Cause now you're buying me the shoes. I don't have to spend a hundred on me and a hundred on her. I, you know what I mean? Like to me, that's pretty bold of the female. But I'm not judging it at the same time because some females are just in need and they like, look, I can't even buy. I'm not buying my. You know, some. Okay. Some mothers think like, in hindsight, like everything for my kid. So like, I don't need nothing, just buy it for my kid. Like, right? But one of my, my mentors and my big sisters, shout out to her, Jazz Cooper, you know, just some real advice she said to me one day. She said, you know, I don't really regard women who said my kids are my world. My kids is an asset to my world because see, if I can't, if I'm not my world and I can't function properly through myself, I can never be a proper mother. 100%. Like, you get what I'm saying? So, to constantly treat something or someone above yourself anyway is just can be detrimental if you don't have a balance. So, all that to say is, my daughter, love her to death. She's my world in hindsight, but I'm, I have to still take care of me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. 
Love and order is God, Jesus, yourself, and then, then somebody and else. then and then right. that somebody is technically then your kid, right. right? So all that to say again, nine times out of ten, I'm taken care of. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, my daughter's taken care of. So whatever you do for me, that's also an asset. Like I don't need to shift the dynamic. I don't need to put it to my child. I don't I could literally take that gift and be like, oh, thank you. I, you know, I, thank you. I appreciate it because I do enough for myself. Somebody's giving me something. I appreciate it. I'm probably got some extra money now. Now I can go buy my daughter something extra too. Uh, like, um, yeah. Well, well, first before I say my take, right? Mm -hmm. This is why I fuck with you, right? So we are very different. We, we do think very different, right? But within that with the cons comes some pros as well so like the pros is you always challenge my thinking so mm -hmm. like the first thought that i had was fuck that nigga shout out to shorty like she's mm -hmm. a real woman you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. but i never even thought about that yeah if you get me some shoes that is helping me because now i don't have to get me and my daughter some yeah shoes. i can just get my daughter some shoes right so, I fuck with that because I didn't even I didn't even think about that like mm -hmm. I, that wasn't even in my mind. But again, shout out to Shorty, uh, my nigga. Um, mm -hmm. You're a weirdo. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know who it was, but if you're gonna buy, first of all, they probably gonna be cheaper. Like, that, like you're a weirdo. I'm, that's well, my take. I'm sorry. Well, that's just me. Who, who's who the guy? Like, yeah, like so not necessarily because see, my daughter's ten no, and thirteen. We, wow, that's you. Okay, like, thirteen. Why fair? Fair. Like, she, he did say thirteen. Why? But in hindsight, like you gotta understand, some men, every man don't gotta come in. What part okay, yeah, like yeah, like yeah, yeah. so yeah, for example, right. especially that's why I said depends where they are. So if I'm just dating you right now, we ain't there yet, yo, don't just throw that on me because now not only you didn't ask me, but like it's like we never had a conversation. So if we had the conversation, we would know like where we are. So I would know that damn you don't really want nothing for yourself and how I can make you happy is getting something for your kid. But we'd already had that conversation, so it's established, no, right? right? <laughs> However, if we're not there yet, we've never had that conversation and you just automatically throw that on me, I feel like you are you might be low-key pressuring me into something that I'm not even ready for yet. No, you're right. You, you know what I mean? Point. And that's point. why I said, no, I'm not really mad at the guy. Um, I'm not mad at the mother. I just think that one, there's a lack of com communication somewhere. Two, I think, the mom might have a little sense of expectation or entitlement for men. Cause like I hear girls sometimes that be like, oh, if a man can't do nothing for me and my kids, I don't want them. But it's like, bro, can a man get to know you like that to see if he even want parts of either both of y'all? Like, you know what I mean? And I, and I think like it has to be a fine line. I'm gonna still, I'm gonna still shout yeah. out to the mom for like- Nah, shout out to her. Hey, like for we, looking out for baby either way, you know what I mean? Uh, credit goddess, can we- Oh. Again, I shout out, shout out to Credit Goddess because, again, of course, I opened up my account and I went up three more points. Last week, I told you, last episode, I told you I went up 24 points. Mm. I looked back the next week, I was up three more points. Oh, yeah. And even though y'all think three month, three points is three points, let me tell you, it is that much to get you over a threshold that you need to get over. That's so two right. points, one point. I'll take every point. Again, shout out to Credit Goddess. She's doing the work, behind the scenes, putting in the work, doing everything I need her to do. Again, next year, we in the 800 Club. Follow me. Shout out to the credit goddess. At uh, the credit goddess. She got me right. Uh, what I will say is, on the flip side, right? Mm -hmm. So we still talking about the credit goddess. Yeah. When you holler at the credit goddess, make sure that you follow up with the credit goddess as well. Yeah. Make sure that you, um, she has if a anything goes wrong, yeah. Yeah. If anything goes wrong, call her. Yeah. So she can help you and and any other situations. Yeah. Um, you said she got what? Uh, also, she has a financial planner that's coming out that's like fire. You could pre-order it now. Um, the financial prep, uh, planner is actually like a calendar and helps you put in all your bills and notes and things that's gonna help you succeed to that next level of budgeting. Um, a lot of us don't know how to budget properly. Um, we may be trying, we may be learning, but that extra effort into your finances can make the smallest and biggest difference that you probably need to get to that next level. So look out for her financial planner at the credit goddess. It's so cute too, especially for the ladies. Um, fellas, I don't know if she has like a less dainty one, <laughs> but uh, either way, a financial so planner is like, for me, huh? it don't yeah, pay, yellow, yeah. I don't care. It's fire. Shout out to the so shout she out to the credit up, goddess. Uh, credit goddess, right? Yes, sir. All right, um, can we get into yeah, like one of your favorite uh what moments and things to talk about what was popping like the tea and shit what like the shit. popping like the um so one thing I do want to address right now is the Zimmerman case of him suing Trayvon Martin's family for a hundred million um you know. <sighs> 
I just feel so bad for Trayvon Martin's family. R.I.P. Yes, yeah. yeah. Like, what is up? R.I.P. Trayvon Martin. R.I.P. Trayvon Martin. But can we get have R.I.P. to this bottle? Because I've been drinking and you you still got bottom drink. Get it right, bro. Get it right. I clearly am never allowed to have a calm Sunday. I ain't gonna lie though. This is this is this giving me you no. Right. That's why like, I said like, I was I balancing it. Bottles like bottles of champagne instead of bottle of liquor. Cause I'm a little I mean serious. that's what people do, but champagne is only good by itself. Like I don't like to mix it or you anything. Like you like most? No, I like mimosas, but I like I mean like you know how people you will go to the club and do like Hennessy and champagne. No, it got to be just champagne at the table mm. because like you mix them. Like I had the worst headache. Like everything is bad. God. Back to this Trayvon Martin versus Zimmerman. So this this is what I'm gonna say, it's right? Awesome yeah, period. <laughs> so this is what I'm gonna say. So fuck Zimmerman. That's just plain point to the point. But the only thing that's really alarming me right now, to be honest, I seen Trayvon Martin's family lawyer talk out about this. He's not with the shit. So I have confidence that he's about to go ahead and get this up out the way. So prayerfully, this is just you know, talk, doing too much, clout chasing like he wants, and it'll be over soon, right? No, you're right. Oh, shout out to Morna after, yeah, just call it. <laughs> I know, I, mean, you I know got what I mean. Yeah. Cut it up. So, but one thing I don't like, just far as the people, mm -hmm. so I was looking at the comments, mm -hmm. and every comment says the same thing nobody killed this man yet, nobody shot this man yet. Y'all letting him walk and he he's still alive. And this is the only thing that kind of concerned me with this, right? Mm -hmm. In a society that's very influenced by social media, what the peers say, I don't know if somebody in his hometown, I don't know, might not have had any credit before in his life, wants to feel heroic and accidentally sees Zimmerman in a store and does something that takes his whole life away. You know what I mean? So here's the, the thing. That tried to yeah, exactly. So here's the thing. I hope and wish that eventually he does go to jail for something, right? Mm -hmm. If the jails decide to execute him, thank you, right? But to promote people to kill this man, you can literally be ruining somebody's life because you gotta understand how the world is set up. There's a lot of people who are not all the way mentally, you know, logical, right? So they might see it like, yo, I'll be a hero if y'all, you know, if y'all say he need to be out of here, I run, you know, I see this thing at the gas station every morning at 6.30, I'll do it. And now this man's life is now completely taken away because he's doing the work of social status. That's, like, that's why, it like, scares me. That's not It scares right. me. Like, that's why conspiracy is real. Yeah. Like, Arrest for conspiracy because influence is real. Yeah, it's, like, it's bad. It's people out here that, that want to be looked, they don't. They probably don't have. Nobody has ever acknowledged them in their life, and they have. They see this as a chance. Right. A chance to be like, yo, I can be a hero. Yeah. Like, honestly, you're gonna throw away your entire life. Yeah. To try to be a hero, and, and even it's crazy because moving forward from that, right? Yeah. Like that goes into the influence of couples. That yeah. Goes into like this, the influence, just the just yeah. this world of influence, right? Like social media. A lot of people see things on social media and they think they deem it to be right. Yep. So yep. they want to move like it's right when no, it's not. So yeah. you got to be careful of what You got to be say. so careful of what we say. And the real thing that killed me about seeing those comments is... First of all, none of y'all are killers. None of y'all know what it feels like to take a life for y'all to be encouraging. Like, I could not believe the amount of people that was like, somebody killed this man already. I'm like, yo, look, my faith is set up is how it's set up. Like, bro, like, taking a life is not, like, the answer to everything. Actual you know, prison and all those things to, you know, and of course I do believe that he deserves whatever he gets bad out of this world completely. 100%. But to encourage and talk about what, what what worries me is so many people is like he should die, he should die. That's fine, right? But now since you think like that, you can really think like that for anything. Like mm. thinking like taking a life is so simple that way. Yeah. Or like like somebody dying is so simple that way that's a that's a load that i don't think people are ready for that they're talking about like somebody kill this man it's like people bro you never held that. a gun a day in your life you never even beat nobody up a day yeah. in your life people, like people, people just you know, say that because it sounds good it's not nice they don't even understand how it's not nice pressure 
you're putting on somebody. Like if, if somebody kills somebody, right. you know, what the hell are you living with? Yo. What is it? I hope I'm saying right. PTSD? Yeah. Like, a lot of traumatic stress you know disorder. Like, you kill somebody and now you got to live with that every yeah. single day. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Like, we do got to be careful what we say. We exactly. Be how we criticize. Them. Yeah. And that actually goes into like Cardi B and Offset. Oh, because shit. It's like everybody got something to say. Okay. <laughs> About something. On social media, it's like, so, if you see something, you got something to say. This is how I feel. Right. About Cardi B and Offset. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like when you are in a social light that way, mm -hmm. Some things like just need not to be addressed, right? Everybody is always gonna have something to say. Like so when I look at Cardi from B, her, from her side. From okay, so okay, so from Cardi B side, right? As Cardi B, um, what I didn't like, like I see the video and she's like, "We've been good." He's right here and he's like holding the baby, like, "Yeah, I'm right here." I was like, I got like secondhand embarrassment Why because it's be like, still be in, uh, like, what are we talking right about? He right here. Yeah, yeah right. Here, right. What's up, Yeah, we doing, this for, the yeah. we doing this for the pop. We doing this for the pop. We gotta do this. Like our PR said. Like either way, I don't know what goes on behind that. But all I'm trying to say is, like, people are gonna have something to say regardless. As Cardi B, you cannot always be like, oh, I gotta say something. Like, come on, Jay Z cheated on Beyonce, bro. She put it in the fucking record and she never acknowledged anybody ever again about it. Like, who the fuck cares? Y'all cannot tell me how to live my life. Y'all cannot tell me. I don't care about your opinions. I don't care about none of that. I cannot continuously engage in people who always are going to have something to say because they have a fucking Instagram. Right. There's millions of people in the world who have Instagram. If I have to address all of you at all times, like, I'm wasting my time. Not to mention, it just looks foolish because, honestly, I think <laughs> I think it's a little bullshit. The ha like, I don't know. It was a weird situation with the hacking and how it ha came about and then, all this or, yeah or like they have something to say what you don't like because then you go yeah and like how they always get business they always trying to talk about cardi b to sell a duh you're cardi b <laughs> like of course like, we're in your like business you're, you're kind of initiating it because yeah anything, we couldn't have it well, it'll die down it'll be right. gone with the wind so now, like, like we could talk about offset cheating but now that you said something guess what now we can talk about offset cheating now we can talk about you responding yeah there's so many other things mm -hmm. you can talk about when you could just you know what I'm saying? Leave it like let it go. That's what I said. In terms of celebrity relationships, like, yo, whatever you're doing, do what you do, but just don't keep engaging back and forth with the public because, like, honestly, it gets foolish after a time. Like, I don't know how many times that Cardi B is going to address Offset potentially cheating, like, or cheating. Like, I don't, like, honestly, look, if you want to be with your cheating ass husband, be with your cheating ass husband. We don't need to keep going back and forth with you. People won't have their pins anyway, but once you start stepping in the fire to defend him and do all that now, of course, they're going to have things to say back at you and you're going to keep extending the fire. Girl, live your life. Live, live your I life with like your you cheating ass man. When you, when you are in the public, even us, like on a smaller level, like when you're in the public, people are, you got to understand that people mm -hmm. are going to say what they want to say. Always. So just allow, opinions are like assholes. Yeah, period. Everybody has one. You know what I'm saying? So allow them to have their opinion. Yeah. Just keep it stepping. Like, period. And, like, um, also we were talking about just being in the public, the dude, Brother Nature. Yeah. Like, he's a big, like, influencer. He always, the guy that's always with the deers. Yeah. <laughs> He's a nice dude. Well, I don't know him, but it so, seems like he's a nice dude. I don't. Man. So apparently he got jumped. Yeah. So again, I honestly hate. Uh, I hate videos, right? Yeah. You know, I say that is because yeah. videos are so short and it makes you judge something that you have no idea. Right. right. We what we still don't before. know like you know why, what, where. Well, yeah. Just given the history. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't. No brother nature. Yeah. But from what I can see, it looks like yeah. he's a positive. Dude. Yeah. Like, it looks like it. Yeah. So why anybody would want to jump this man? I'm unsure. But it just leaves me like Does not to say. Um, Alex, yeah. Alex. But okay. So not to say. Like, I don't like to say, like, what did he do to get jumped? Like, that's not what I'm that's saying. A, that's a real question. But it's just, though. like, for you to get a beating like that, like, what did happen? Like, well, I need to know something. At the same time, though. Before I just enhance my sympathy. Because I don't know if you seen the guy last week um, that the police beat him up really bad in California. Mm. And he went to, he, he basically, the police beat him up really bad. He went to Instagram, face was 
fucked up. I'm not gonna lie. But apparently everybody came back and dragged him, like, tell him what you did before that. Tell him what you did before that. Apparently he was basically very drunk and very aggressive and being this wild nigga. And so what happened was he was they brought him to jail for that. So he got in trouble for this. They bring him into jail and he must have got into it with a female officer, bit her and try to fight her and then the cops granted the cops like they be wilding he did not deserve a beating how he got because they fucked him up like his face was done however you went in trying to fight a cop and then you and a woman and then you came to social media as if it was a racial issue that's why i said like i just want to know more details of brother nature because not to say you deserved anything of what you got at all, but something has to be said to the public to understand the whole entire story. Right. So that we can give you the sympathy that Just you like need. The, uh, they can give you the sympathy that you deserve. And that's, the, you know. The teacher in, um, in this area or whatever, she was fighting a, a young lady. And, Ooh, yeah. But we only seen the video. However, like this late, this young, this young. She was in high school. The little girl yeah, was in high school, right? I mean, I'm a, little, not little. Yeah. little. Like, first but, of all, and yeah. I heard the teacher was like five one, right? Yeah, like the girl was like apparently being disrespectful multiple times, and she like, reported it multiple times. times. So like sometimes you hit that breaking point. But I want to get back on topic as far as saying <laughs> what I see from him. Mm-hmm. He looks like a positive guy. Yeah. And at, on the flip side, you never know. It's just a lot of people yeah. that have hate in their heart. Yeah, it facts. Might, it might be somebody that hate deers. Yeah. It could be. It could, be, saying, it could like, really be anything, which is know. the scary part. So it's like. And and on top of that, people love clout. Like let's talk about it. Like people love clout. Like he's hot or he is hot and he's in Miami. We don't know what side it's on because he could want a little more clout. They could want a little more clout. It, it could really work on any side because clearly the video went viral, right? right? Of course it would go viral, right? Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? So we really don't know the side that it lays on. Um I got a game for you though. Before we go. You wanna Wait a minute. You want to go? So okay. Say, nah, nah, nah. We need to talk about this. Hold on. Nah, we need to talk about nah, this. Our situation happened to me. And like, Let's, no, 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 no. We got to talk about this. No, mm-hmm. no, no. Uber. Yeah, so um, basically uh, Uber is spending five. No, they didn't spend. They they concluded that 5,000 sexual, they have 5,000 sexual assault cases. Cases. You're right, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I do not... This is like not like I don't doubt that at all. Yeah, no. Like, but what I like is that it's actually been not like. But what I'm saying is, it's both ways. It's on the drivers and it's the drivers. So something is wrong here. You know what I mean? Something is wrong here. And then, well, five hundred plus. Yeah. Um, brother nature is his Twitter is just brother nature. Uh, all one word. He was just saying, like, I know there's a video out of me getting jumped. Everyone in the pizza shop literally just watched with their phones out and did nothing. You know? And that was true because the video that we saw, if you get a chance, um, we, we might can put it up. Uh, but, yeah, we can put it up right without, without the audio. Just show it. Like, we can talk over. But I just, like, it, I hate to out. be this person. I really do. Uh-oh. But there's no way for me. I'm Me personally... Don't I know. Talk I, okay. Okay. Because you never know. Two faced. Okay. You're right. But nobody did nothing. Those guys look kind of big. Nobody did nothing. <clears throat> All right. Great. 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 Great point. Right. So that leads into the, the conversation of like men putting their hands on women and men not other men not helping. So like you never know. I'm not saying that it's okay not to help. Right. But you never know what somebody else is capable of, right? Like, it might be a situation where they're doing this. You try to jump in, and now you get shot. You get stabbed. Now you're, you're Agreed. You're, you know what I'm saying? Not Agreed. saying it's okay. No, I Not mean, okay. I, get, I get it. I get but it. But we just got to look at both sides. We got to tread yeah. lightly. You know, it, it, no, we have to always tread lightly. It's like, it's, you know, and I feel bad for a brother nature. And I really hope, you know what I mean? That he under, like so. Here's the other thing that this also gets into is having a social status and thinking you don't need protection. Mm-hmm. A lot of people down like a lot. Like of you downplay down yourself. Play They're too humble. Yeah, you downplay your celebrity, not knowing that you're still a walking piece of 
lick out here like anything like anything like it's not even just they can't if even if they can't rob you of jewels they can rob you of you because they want some clout or some some status or whatever like and it's not nice somebody that yeah it's not true like even just people do that all the time yeah you have a girlfriend you out in the club you coming out now niggas want to do too much yeah yeah that's not cool you don't get no brownie yeah like and it's crazy because like you know that just made me sad. Like I, I don't like reading that because it's, he's like, and nobody help, and they just watch. And I just couldn't imagine. And that's why I said, like, I know it's a scary time, but like, just imagine if that was your brother mm-hmm. or that was you, and you're here and nobody helped and did nothing. Facts. Like, that's a scary thing. Like it's, it's a scary feeling. That's so. somebody's five thousand uh, sexual assault. Five thousand plus. Damn. Like what the hell? So the thing about Uber, what really trips me out. So I took an Uber. I don't take Uber often. I took an Uber to go meet my friend for dinner on um friday and the one thing it was crazy because i i I got out and i spoke to her on about it and i was like i was tired and i remember i was in the back of the uber and i wanted to doze off but i could not and i like had to keep my eyes glued at the you know the map Mm -hmm. to make sure i was going where i needed to go because realistically what so it, it propped me for one thing so yeah uber does background checks but Every criminal don't got a bad his like history on paper and on paper. Even farther than that, right? Hypothetically, <clears throat> if I want to do an Uber in somebody's car and you're not checking, you don't know. On like it's, yeah, for the Uber, the, for the person that's catching the Uber, you definitely want to be cautious. You want to look at the person in the face. You want to look at their license plate. But it's some people out there who don't double check. So for those who don't double check, it could be a guy. Let's say I signed up for Uber. My friend can get in my car and. Do whatever you, you want. So if you don't see the face, right? Right. And it, but it's so my thing well, my is, phone, what I is my phone? Right. My thing is, what is Uber going to do about the applicants that they have writing for Uber? Like, granted, like, you, of course, is Uber is big. Like, you, it's hard to weed out, you know, those type of people. But what are you going to do about that? Five thousand plus cases is a what fucking whole lot. Like, what can like what can you do? About? Man. Because I, it's hard because like you know cameras. that right we like the only thing I can think of is cameras right. because if, 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 I think Uber needs to start to send out cameras recordings yep like so like recordings you know, like cabs I think they have live camera feed. yeah that's how, like uh, dispatchers that watch the routes and what's going on and anything mm-hmm. that's taking a second too longer calling oh, in yeah. and you have to check in and let us know what's going on 100%. so maybe they need more dispatching they need more cameras and audio mm-hmm. inside and if you are driving look first of all they make more than a fuck enough money they can get some audio or a piece of something to put in just because you have to protect the driver mm-hmm. and you have to protect the passenger like you know what I mean like even like all right so it's crazy because i didn't get to go into anxiety but i'm gonna tell you a quick gimmick of why i actually had a whole anxiety attack for the first time and it's crazy because i never had an anxiety attack and i'm gonna be honest and i feel i'm so sorry to the people who suffer with anxiety because i used to think like man everybody keeps talking about the anxiety shit they dragging it like you know what i mean it's like i got anxiety every every everybody got anxiety and it would it would like irritate me almost because i'm like oh my god all right every time i talk to a girl she's always like i got anxiety i just can't and i just like all right stop running with that however i had my first anxiety attack for the first time and i'm gonna tell you what it was over so uber at this point to me goes hand in hand with you know so you it, it has 500 plus sexual assault cases so it goes hand 5, in hand 000. with me 5,000 excuse me but it goes hand in hand with me with the missing cases mm-hmm. and sex trafficking all that now to me is in the same pot same thing. right it's all it's all the same thing which is why on Friday I couldn't even blink like I wanted to fall asleep so bad I was in traffic for 37 minutes but I refused to even close my eyes because you just never know right so I got I had an anxiety attack because what happened was me and Jay was dropping Amaya off to dance and most times either we'll walk her in or we're watching her like we're literally in front of the door so we're watching her walk in what happened was she was getting out the car we were late and a lot of times if Amaya's late she'll want to run out the car or whatever and I think I like looked to my left at something was busy in my head doing something in the car i said something to jay i don't know if i answered my phone or what i did and then i pulled off Mm -hmm. i get two lights up and i'm like oh my god did we watch amaya go in like 
And so, like, I'm really asking Jay, like, I don't remember. Like, so we're calling her. She's not answering. Obviously, she's late for dance, and she had to run inside a dance. And I look to my left. Ironically, I see, like, two white vans, and I go into a fucking whole frenzy. My throat literally closed up. I felt a ball in my neck to my chest. Actually, Jay, Jay didn't know what was going on with me. I really could not breathe for five to 10 minutes. And I had to literally like talk myself down and talk myself out of it because I really was going into a fear of panic. So of course my due diligence, I passed that crazy. The next day I, t- I wrote on my Instagram, like I wanna talk about anxiety. I literally talked to 20 people, no lie. That all was like me, I have anxiety. Like th- that was my, like I was like that my first time. It, like- so I went and did a little research and um, cause I wanted to decipher between anxiety attack and panic attack. So basically um, anxiety attack is more of a fear of something, mm-hmm. of what could happen in the past, future or present. So like it's a buildup of like something that might be fearful of like you know what's going on uh anxiety a panic attack is more so like a, a thinking level of you know being very down wishing um like wishing death upon yourself and mm-hmm. working yourself up into those frenzies of death and suicidal thoughts that puts you in a panic attack uh, panic attacks are normally abrupt and you don't like they come anxiety attacks you can feel them building so it's crazy i say that because i could literally feel the build up like i went from just thinking that i see her go through the door i look to the left i see the white vans i I could feel it like coming from my stomach up to my throat all that to say yo i don't know what safety measures we need in place but we need to feel safe like you know what i mean because it was really the fear of being safe i'm like there's all these girls in this building you know what i mean all i know it like missing kids sex trafficking it's like so i i I even took it as far because i started feeling this remember like a week before that i text you was like i was like crying at work because i was going in a frenzy so it clearly was a build-up like of me finally getting there but how do you yeah, go ahead. So I, I went to my mentor and I talked to her about it. I was like, yo, because she has a daughter as well. And I was like, I'm just like in this frenzy. And she was like, the one thing I want to say is, boom. So the problem is first for start, we see it happening so much, right? So we see it on social media. We see it on the news, not realizing that there's no crazy spike in it. It's been happening the same way it's been happening for decades. Oh, yeah. What happens is the police are using social media to try to help them them to get you know it back, like to get help and try to crack down on it more. So because every time I turn around, I'm on social media, this is what I see. Every time I go to these places, this is what I see. I have to understand that life has been happening and it's always happening and i can't it, right i just see it more right i mean all that's is right no go ahead um i'm sorry mm-hmm. summer walker you still you still don't get a pass <laughs> because if you understand <laughs> period that, like if you understand that yeah you suffer from social right anxiety, there we go you have a concept. so like you learn right from if you don't learn from the mistakes that you that right you and that was actually my next point so this is how I thought to le- like to leverage my first level of having an anxiety attack and things like that, right? So it's funny, two days later, I can kind of, when Amaya was leaving for North Carolina and I was like really having this frenzy like of us not going for the first time and she's going to North Carolina, I could kind of feel the buildup, but I was able to kind of talk myself back down. So one, um, I kind of created a method in my head of what to do with anxiety. First of all, limit your social media. Like, you know, everybody social suffers from anxiety for all different reasons. And, you know, whether your reasoning is being, you know, fearful of, you know, family or not being where you are, need to be, or, you know, you're not setting your, you're not meeting your goals or whatever your anxiety is, you have to limit social media and looking at things that could potentially show you that's exactly where you're potentially or supposedly not, or this could supposedly happen, right? So... I really try, after that, I try to less and less be on social media just to kind of detox. Like, I think we all need that. Like, we don't need to be on there too often. Also, self-care, self-care, self-care. So, 
I don't know what anybody's vices are or how you self care. I think anybody, you can self care really however you want to. Mm-hmm. But like, so some might be hanging with friends, some, some might be going out to the club and just unwinding. Some may be reading a book, some may be taking a walk down water, whatever it is do more of the things that make you feel good versus that allows you to think of what ifs and what nots right um and also of course i always encourage the 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 broad way you pray your way out of it so when i was going through my anxiety i had to literally pray to myself like god help me with this get through this because it was hard like it was my first time and it really scared me and i don't think jay even realized how much it scared me because i kind of went on about the day as if it never happened but it is happening and because it's happening to so many people i want to let people know there's not a direct cure for it because it's really internal and it's really internal on how your thinking is and your stamina of thinking your ability to be able to walk yourself out of negative thoughts like honestly so just practicing that stamina and the best way i can say to that is constantly tell yourself and feed yourself good things constantly pray and constantly put yourself in positions to like i said self-care be around things that are actually allowing you to feel good and not feel in a negative space and also just taking those time out of detoxing no social media for a little bit so you not are you you can't see those things so much so yeah no yeah. I, th- I thought the biggest real and um we do take granted yeah things that we don't speak about the yeah so like social anxiety is one of them things anxiety period is one of them yeah things. so we gotta just dive deeper yeah. into it and take it more seriously but, um mm-hmm. i think you did a great job you did you did a great job, babe. This was a more serious podcast, but I think we had to touch on a couple things that we don't always get to touch on because we're having a lot of fun. But sometimes we gotta do, we do have to dive into those real life scenarios and let people know, like we all going through it and we all gotta stick through it and grow through it. So dive in. I like that. Dive might, in. Might, might name that. Dive mm-hmm. in. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like dive that. in. We out? You, or what, I mean, we got some more time? How many? I mean, is, I don't want to, you, well, you want to go into the game? You want to wait? Yeah, it's up to you. Well, what you think, producer? What you think, Alex? Wrap it up. Cool. Let's right, out. Yo, so. sure subscribe on our YouTube, Mr. J Hill. Uh, make sure you follow us. Healer Bay underscore. That's Healer Bay, all one word. Underscore. Healer Bay. Mr. underscore J Hill. Uh, please subscribe. Hey, please send one of us your emails. We yes. This email list so you can get the podcast. Exclusives. So, um, we record on Sundays. Yes, sir. If you, have, if you gave us your email, you will get the podcast audio on Sunday. The video drops Wednesday. We can we can agree to that. Boom. The video drops Wednesday, and um, that's pretty much it. You. Hill of Bay, Mr. J Hill. We out. Yeah, Period. Poo. Gymnoscopio podcast. <laughs>